So it's about 7.35 in the morning. We're in Bozeman, Montana. And uh, as you can see here, the solar is getting about 67 watts. You can see the stats there. I'm gonna start tilting the panels and show you what happens. Let's watch the solar, 85, 93, 106, 27, 139. You can see as it starts tilting again it's about 7 38 in the morning you see this 233 404. So there we are. I'm about at 45 degrees. And I went from about 60 or 70 watts to right there sitting at 454, 730 in the morning. You see, I'm pulling almost 60 volts, seven and a half amps. And yeah. The sun is barely up over the horizon. And that, my friends, is the secret sauce of the adjustable tilt. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on the video. Before we start talking about solar, I just wanted to say we're going to be releasing uh, several episodes um, to go into our van in further detail. Okay. We've been getting a lot of questions, so we're also going to cover recirculating showers air conditioners, the layout and planning, electrics, plumbing, and then appliances and cooking. So we've got plenty to cover, so let's jump right in. Okay guys, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how I built the attic and the tilting panels. But until then, let me show you the components I have in the van. Let's start with the solar panels. So I have six 180 watt solar panels from Grape Solar. I chose these primarily because the dimensions the overall landscape of the van so you can see each panel is about 27 inches by 59 inches for a total of 54 inches by 177 inches this keeps my panels from hanging over the van each panel is about 180 watts for a total of 1080 watts so to the battery at 13 or 14 volts at full sun full power max power i'd get 83 to 77 amps now, on a good sunny day, I realistically average about 800 or 900 watts, which is really about 57 to 69 amps in good sun. Obviously, as the sun goes down, that diminishes. Now, there's a lot of information on this slide, so if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. But I have an MPPT 150-100 charge controller from Victron. And basically what that does is takes the 59 volts that I have from the, pa from the panels and converts it down to the 13 to 14 volts that my battery can ingest. As you guys have already seen, it has an amazing app which allows me to monitor the charge, what my incoming resources, and also it allows me to look back at the history of the solar that I've taken in through the system. So a couple more details about my system. I have eight 100 amp lithium batteries so i have a pretty big battery bank so my general intake as i said on a sunny day is about 800 to 900 watts an hour my max day is about six kilowatts or six thousand watts per day and all that depends on the sun the sun and the conditions as well as my battery state of charge it's also important to mention that solar is really not the center of my electric system it's the battery bank and so all my electrics run off the batteries and the solar the solar panels add charge to those. Additionally, I have a second alternator that's ded dedicated to the panels. So really I have a complementary charging system. Finally, I have shore power charger. I rarely use that because between my solar panels and my alternator, I keep my batteries charged pretty well. Now, when I designed the system, I looked at our overall power consumption. Our three biggest power consumers are our induction burner, our oven, and then our air conditioner. 
Now, typically, an oven or a stove only run for about 20 minutes to a half hour, where the air conditioner can run up to many hours. So I sized this system to meet our demand. Okay, guys, I want to show you this is just not an early morning thing. It's about 9.30 now. Flat, I'm getting 371, and I'm actually parked a little bit on a slope. So my flat panels are favoring the sun a bit. So I'm at 372, 373, somewhere in there in terms of watts. My batteries are getting about 26 amps at 3.6 volts. So let me go ahead and start tilting here. And you can see there, I believe my panels are starting to tilt. So 405, 422, 451, 465. So you can see my energy is already going up significantly. 491, 441. It's starting to go back down. So this is where I like the adjustable tilt. So I could stop it right there. Look at there. So I stop it right there. So even when I'm getting, getting good sun already, just a small tilt, that's probably about 20 degrees, gives me 611 watts. And so not quite double, but almost double of the energy intake. And that's the power of the adjustable tilt. So you can see my battery charge is now 43 amps to my battery. So again, significant improvement. Okay guys, as promised, I told you if you stuck around long enough, I would show you how I build the attic and the tilting solar guys, panels. I know this graphic is a little booger up, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it. So the attic is basically comprised of uh, two pieces. Number one is the attic frame, or what I call the box. And then number two is the panel frame, or what I call the lid. The attic frame, or the box, is made of 80-20 one-inch aluminum. It's, it's attached to the van by rib nuts and quarter-inch stainless steel bolts at 12-inch centers for the length of the frame. If you look at all the blue lines in the attic frame box, those are actually 80-20, which give the entire box plenty of strength and support. Moving up, you'll see the hinge line. The hinge line is what connects the lid to the box. Simply put, there's hinges at 12 foot centers for the length of the attic frame and the panel frame. These not only act to help the panels go up or down, but they also give a lot of strength to both the box and the lid. Moving up to the lid, the lid is also primarily made of 8020 aluminum 10 series this is where i attach the panels each panel has 10 bolts that attach it to the frame in addition in addition to the frame there's also two two inch aluminum tubes which i call the header that run the distance of the panel lid these are where i attach the top side of the linear actuator this does two things. Number one, it gives a solid base for the linear actuator. And in addition, it also gives additional strength to the panel frame lid. Next, on to the actuators. The actuators are what raise and lower the panel lid. So the linear actu actuators are connected to the two aluminum tubes on the panel frame lid what I call the header, and they're also connected to, on the bottom, by two, or by two by two aluminum tubes, which I call the footer. The footers are attached to the frame of the bottom of the attic frame box. And so that gives me a really solid foundation. Now each end of the linear actuators are bolted with a 5 16 bolt all the way through the two by two aluminum. I use big fender washers to give it really super strength. 
so that there's no give or no push or no wiggle as it raises or lowers the panels. It's really solid and it works really well. The linear actuators are both wired to the remote control controller box, which in turn is wired to the batteries. Both of my cables, both of my wires to the linear actuators are the same length because they're wired in parallel. This keeps the linear actuators in sync. Around the top edge of the attic frame or the box, I have strategically placed L brackets. And those L brackets act as a resting pad for the panel frame lid when it's closed. So as the actuators pull down, the, the frame lid sits on those L brackets and actually pulls it down nice and tight. And that prevents any vibration and it also keeps any weight off of that panel frame lid. So it's actually really tight and snug. Okay hey guys, I want to show you just one more example. So I come back, it's 10.30. I got a little cloud going on, but my panels are flat. So I think you saw 488 was where I was peaking, 526, 526, 527, and I'm flat right now. So let's go ahead and tilt it. So there you go, guys. As you know by now, I'm a big fan of the tilting panels. I know for a fact that it gives me extra energy, which in my circumstances I absolutely need. Secondly, the attic gives me some additional light storage, some winter clothes, snowboards, maybe some spare parts and some extra depth. So, so in all in all, this has been a huge win for our van. I hope you enjoyed this tech talk on van solar. I hope you got maybe a little nugget from it or learned something. By all means, if you have more questions or would like some more details, hit us up in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the notification bell. So when we release our next video, which is going to be on a circulating shower system, you'll get notified. And also, we have some travel videos that are tracking us as we travel around the world. So we hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. and We'll see you guys later.